What is up, guys? It is Cashing with Cody, and we are in Belmont County, Ohio, and it is dark as dickens. And I'm actually camping at uh, Bart Camp uh, State Park, and uh, got here a little bit later than I had hoped, and uh, it is dark as Batman out here right now. So. Uh, let's get out of here and see if we can't get uh, get set up. Uh, might need to get a fire going first. Uh, so uh, let's let's go set up base camp. So yeah, when I say it is dark, it is dark. So uh, yeah, let's go get a fire going. Oh yeah, I made these with uh, toilet paper rolls and dryer lint. So you can see this actually works. To admit I'm pretty impressed I was able to get that going with uh, just the flint steel and some uh, dryer lint so fire's going nice got a little bit of light and I uh, found a nice spot for the tent there we go handy dandy little flashlight I found on Amazon it's got a UV light for UV caches and a little side light perfect for this yourself a, a cold adult beverage and maybe some popcorn while we take care of this here. Man, that took a while. <laughs> sleeping quarters for the night. We got everything set up for the night. We got sleeping bag pumped up. We got the sleeping bag ready to go. Pillow is uncompressing, I guess. Finish unpacking in the morning when we got some more daylight. And uh, I think we're gonna enjoy the fire and maybe have an adult beverage. Get back at it tomorrow. So it's uh, a little after seven. And I uh, woke up to feet getting wet. It's been raining all night. Yeah, it's fun. Let's get an early start. Let's go geocaching. Got some breakfast, uh, got some coffee in me. I am very wet. It's time to go start the Belmont County Geo Tour. We are at stop number one on the Belmont County Geo Tour. Stop number one is taking us to Pike Island Locks and Dam. Now, this is actually the fifth lock and dam on the Ohio River, located about 84 miles downstream of Pittsburgh. There's two locks, about 1,200 feet long and about 110 feet wide, and the auxiliary lock, which is 600 feet long by 110 feet wide. The Pike Island locks were actually constructed in 1959 and were opened in November of 1963. And now for the cache. Here it is. OK. 
cash number one. Log book. Trade items. My little pony. Some stickers. Sign this. On to the next one. We are at stop number two on the Belmont County Geo Tour. And uh, stop number two has taken us to the Walnut Grove Cemetery. The Walnut Grove Cemetery is the burial place of members of the Zane and Martin families. This uh, cemetery is also the resting place of many of the early Martin's Ferry residents, including veterans of the Revolutionary War and the War of 1812. They were significant in the pioneer history of the region. Betty Zane's legendary heroism at Fort Henry, which is now Wheeling, West Virginia, helped settlers resist an attack by the British and their Native American allies in September of 1782. It's a big boomstick. Well, got some bad news, guys. We got our first DNF. On the plus side, it wasn't the first cache we were looking for, so we still have good juju for the day. Um, found the spot where it should be. Um, it was a very, very obvious, plain, plain as day spot. Cash wasn't there. Um, this cache looks like it's gone missing three or four times, so it is what it is. On to the next one. We are at stop number three on the Belmont County Geo Tour, and we are at Riverview Cemetery. Uh, this is a very old cemetery, and quite honestly, it's one of the uh, most unique, I guess is the word for it, cemeteries that I've ever seen, uh, just because it's so hilly. Like, it's literally in the side of a hill. Let's go check it out. I'll end up in the ground here too. <laughs> it's an odd place to put a bench. Now, I ain't much of a learned man, but I know a suspicious pile of bark when I see it. Hey yo, cash number three and a worm. Come on, there you go. Cash number three. Such a satisfying sound. So let's uh, sign the log and then on the number four. We are at stop number four. I think it's on this gazebo. Figure while we have the opportunity, have a nice little sit down, enjoy the view, and uh, admire our cash. Air log. Some stickers. Post it notes. On the number five. We are at stop number five, the uh, Concord Hicksite Friends Meeting House. Um, Colorain Township was the location of the earliest Quaker settlement and the first organized Friends Meeting in Ohio. Uh, the first meeting house uh, was built in the 1800s. It was a log structure. It burned down. This building replaced it in 1815. Uh, the Friends supported anti-slavery, Underground Railroad, and uh, in 1828, the Quakers split into the Hicksite and the Orthodox branches. Uh, the Hicksites continued to worship here until they disbanded in 1919. All right, we've got cash number five here at the Quaker Meeting House. And uh, for this one, we're gonna leave on the coins. Log book. Sign this, and then we're off to number six. Six. We are at stop number six on the Belmont County Geo Tour, and uh, we are at the S. Blaine Hill Bridge. Now, this was actually constructed as part of the first federally funded national highway in 1828. The bridge is built out of stone, uh, it's 345 feet in length with three segmented arches of 25 feet. The 1828 bridge remains the longest existing span of its type on the entire six state historic national road. Crumbling and in poor condition, the bridge was actually saved from demolition in 1999 
In 2001, the Ohio Assembly unanimously passed legislation designating the bridge as Ohio's official bicentennial bridge. The 1828 bridge remains the anchor spot illustrating three generations of American highway construction, engineering, and history of national transportation. You might not be able to see it, but this grass is definitely smooshed down. The geocache sensors are tingling. There it is! Cache number six! Got the log. Some more pirate treasures, some more stickers. A little quacker. Let's sign this. And it's on. It's number seven. I'm we'll gonna be running out of fingers soon. We're at stop number seven on the Belmont County Geo Tour and uh, has taken us to Greenwood Cemetery, which is the oldest and the largest. It sits on 33 acres. This place is massive. One of the things I've loved about this geo tour so far is, you know, not necessarily the caches themselves, which are great, locations are great, but also the scenery, uh, just going from cache to cache, going through the rolling hills, uh, especially this time of the year and in, in early fall, it's just been really, really pretty. Uh, wish I could show you guys, but can't really operate the camera while I'm driving. Um, that being said, the road to get to this one was rough. Uh, pretty sure I almost lost my uh, my tiny little little car and a couple of potholes. So, yeah, let's find the cash. Here we go, number seven. We have the log. Sign this. It's on the number eight. We are at stop number eight on the Belmont County Geo Tour, and it has taken us to this awesome stone aqueduct. Or viaduct, I should say. This was actually built in uh, 1871 by the Central Ohio Railroad. Uh, carried north and eastbound rail service across the Ohio River to Benwood, West Virginia. I'll sign that. And it's on number nine. We're at stop number nine on the Belmont County Geo Tour, and stop number nine has taken us to the Shady Side Loop, central part of the Shady Side community. Uh, the history of the Hoot Loop is celebrated every year at the Shady Side Loop Festival. Um, so that's pretty neat. Let's find the cash. Sometimes you gotta dig. Log. Ooh, a very wet original log. Mm. So we'll sign the, the dry one. And then it's on the number. Ten. Here at stop number 10 on the Belmont County Geo Trail and uh, stop number 10 has taken us to a, a somber location. This is Willow Grove Mine um, in uh, 1940 an explosion uh, rippled through the Willow Grove Mine resulting in the death of 72 Ohio Valley men. Uh, so they've erected a memorial. Here's the, the names of the men that died. In the mine explosion. As always, the log book. You know the drill. We're gonna sign this and then on to number 11. The stop number 11 has taken us to this cute little ice cream shop, Kirky's Homemade Ice Cream. Normally, I would not pass this up, but it's a little bit chilly. Uh, there's quite a few muggles here, so we are going to activate stealth. But now we play the game of try not to be suspicious while waiting in your car for the muggles to leave. It's a geocaching pastime. Well, it wasn't where I thought it was. But we found it. Little coaster looking things. Sign that. And on to number 12. We're at stop number 13 on the Belmont County Geo Tour. This cache has actually taken us to do some hiking. We are at the uh, Newland Falls Nature Trail. Well, this isn't a good sign. There's the uh, container, it looks like. There's no cache marker here either. There's no log in here either, so I'm going to assume this is geo trash and we're gonna seedo it out of here. Ooh, a cute little bridge in my geo trash. We're getting close to ground zero, but before we do that, 
Take a look at this view. There it is. Log as usual. Stickers, I think. Another dog tag. We're at stop number 15 on the Belmont County Geo Tour. This one has taken us to the St. Clairsville Community Garden. Oh, that'd be at the end of the season, obviously. Not much growing, but that's okay. What we found. Hey, yo. Our log as per usual. Ooh, look at that. Belmont County Magnet. And, uh, some hair ties. I'm gonna leave uh, one of my coins here. And uh, I'm gonna take the magnet for my fridge. We are at stop number 14 on the Belmont County Geo Tour. And number 14 has taken us to the Belmont County Heritage Museum. Oh, my name is Catherine Stanley and I am the curator of the Belmont County Heritage Museum and I am also the group tour manager for Belmont County Tours. And it is the sheriff's residence. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So the sheriff actively lives here? No, so it used to be state law in Ohio mm -hmm. that the sheriff and their family had to live on the premises of the jail. Oh. So every county in Ohio had a sheriff's residence like this. This one is next to our courthouse. There's a three-story stone jail attached in the back. Oh. The sheriff and their family lived here from 1890 all the way until 1976 when that woman there, Catherine Crumbly, was elected. That is actually a picture of her on the Mike Douglas show. Oh. She was on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson twice. She was on Hee Haw. Uh, they wrote a song about her called The Lady Sheriff of Belmont County and they were going to make a television show. When the sheriff passed away, and he still had a term um, left to fill out, often his wife would become sheriff hmm. for a time. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. It is, and it's a beautiful book. And people actually lived here. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty neat. I didn't yeah. know that they, uh, they had to live on the property list. Yeah, though. it was state law. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. And even if the sheriff's wife didn't have to become sheriff, didn't choose to become sheriff, uh, she was what they called the matron, and she would feed the staff and the prisoners, hmm. and she would also take care of any female prisoners. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Catherine. Oh, you're welcome. It was nice to meet you. It was nice to meet you. Enjoy the geo tour. Absolutely. Bye, well, that was a cool little history tour. Um, now it's time to find the cash. Got our log. Cool trade items in here. Legos. All right. So you know the drill. Sign this, and then uh, on the number. I don't even know what number we're on. On to the next one. <laughs> we're at stop number 19 on the Belmont County Geo Tour. And yes, before you ask, we are doing them out of order. The last three stops I tried to make. Uh, two of them, I'm pretty sure every senior in the county was getting their senior pictures taken at. Uh, and the last one, there was a full-blown wedding taking place. Uh, so we're doing them out of order, and we'll catch those ones tomorrow. This one is uh, taking us to Valley View Campground. Uh, this is a popular venue uh, for the local folks here. They've hosted many country artists and festivals. Uh, and in July, they have a big, a big shindig. And that's not why we're here. We're here for the cash. As always, got the log, more pirate treasure, some cool swag in there. I'm gonna leave that, sign the log, and on to hopefully number 20. We are at stop number 20 on the Belmont County Geo Tour. Stop number 20 has taken us to the old National Road. You'll see the, uh, the remnants here, the brick. Bam. Log book as always. Oh, cool. A geocaching sticker. Might have to swap that one out. Of course, take something, you gotta leave it, and drop a geo coin. So you sign this and on to 21. We are at stop number 21 on the Belmont County Geo Tour, and stop number 21 has taken us to the Black Horse Inn. 
Now this was uh, actually built in 1807. Uh, it was a lot smaller then. Uh, they, you know, did additions to it and was uh, supposedly part of the Underground Railroad during the Civil War. Sign that, put it back. We are at stop number 30 on the Belmont County Geo Tour, and stop 30 has taken us to the Epworth Community Park. This is a quaint little park, sits on nine acres. It's got a little amphitheater over there, picnic benches all over the place. It's a very cute little park. So let's go uh, explore it and find the cave. Ah, have a nice sit down, enjoy the view, we'll take a nap. Oh, we got a cash to find. I know a suspicious pile of rocks when I see it. <gasps> I've been played. Oh, cricket. They got me. Yeah. Nailed it. We're just uh, going to ignore the other 15 trees we looked at. But we found it. Drill. Sign the log. Some more swag. Most of the same stuff we found in the other ones. Signature coin. I think we'll trade that out. We're gonna leave Earth Cash coin. Alright, so no drill. We're gonna sign this and on the next one. I've lost count. Alright, well that about wraps up day number one. Uh, so uh, we just got back to camp, picked up some firewood, maybe get a fire going. Uh, relax for the rest of the night and get back at it early in the morning and knock out the rest of these caches. Get packed up, let's hit the roof. Good morning, it is day number two. It is dry, it is cool, and I am just happy that it's dry. And we are at stop number 12 on the Belmont County Geo Tour. And uh, yes, we're doing them out of order. Or things got a little weird yesterday. Uh, I actually tried to come to this cache twice yesterday. And uh, both times, right at ground zero, were two cops. Um, so uh, I, I didn't feel like uh, engaging in that situation of me poking around in the woods with two officers of the law sitting right there. So uh, we're back. There's no officers, so let's go find it. We're at the Belmont County Memorial Park. As always, we got our log book, some more pirate treasure, some gold coins. We are at stop number 16 on the Belmont County Geo Tour, and stop number 16 has taken us to the National Road Bikeway. Now, the National Road Bikeway in St. Clairsville is the only rail trail with a tunnel. Let's go check it out. Now it's important to note that, you know, their claim that this is the only tunnel um, is because this is the only tunnel on a rail trail in Ohio. Um, there are other bike trails in Ohio that have tunnels, obviously, but this is the only one in the state uh, that is a rail trail, meaning at one point this was a railroad way uh, that was later converted into a bike path. There's a white squirrel. You know, kind of interesting stuff. I saw 
an albino squirrel and a couple of deer like right off the trail. Maybe it's a good caching omen. Ancient proverbs say, Cacher who finds albino squirrel, mark no DNF. We are at stop number 17 on the Belmont County Geo Tour, and number 17 has taken us to the Schaefer Campbell Covered Bridge. Now, this bridge was originally built in 1891 in Fairfield County and rescued from destruction in the late 1960s. It was reconstructed on the present site in 1975. The bridge was constructed in multiple Kingsport Trust style. The county contains many examples of that style built by Fairfield native and expert covered bridge builder James W. Buchanan. Uh, the man is credited as the builder of the Schaefer Campbell Bridge. Now the bridge was actually damaged when a tractor fell through the floor in 1973 and it was donated to Belmont County in 1975. Belmont County did not have any covered bridges at the time, and the last covered bridge that they did have had collapsed under the weight of a coal truck in 1953. The bridge was dismantled and taken to the county garage in Lloydsville, where it was reassembled and reconditioned, and the bridge was placed over the college pond in 1975. Find the cash. Hashtag footpath to the cash. There it is. We are at stop number 18 on the Belmont County Geo Tour. And number 18 has taken us to the Great Western Schoolhouse. Now, the Great Western Schoolhouse was built by the Clark Construction Company in 1870. Uh, the school remained in use until 1952. The National Trail Chapter 348 of International Questers restored the building in 1976 as a bicentennial project. It is on the National Register of Historic Places. Now we gotta find the cash. If it was a snake, it would have got me. Log. More leggings. Got a bottle opener. Some gold coins. And a slug. Sign this one. And the next one. We are at stop number 22 on the Belmont County Geo Tour, and stop 22 has taken us to the Underground Railroad Museum. On the next one. We are at stop number 23 on the Belmont County Geo Tour, and stop 23 has taken us to Zion Retreat and RV Park. Never seen the suspended gazebo before. Let's go find the cash. Oh, well, bad news, guys. Cash is gone. I know it's gone because the hint was very, very obvious. And uh, the last several logs, people have put in there that uh, the container is indeed missing. So, mark this one up as a DNF. On to the next one. We are at stop number 24 on the Belmont County Geo Tour, and stop 24 has taken us to the Salem Cemetery. The ghost of Louisa Catherine Fox is said to haunt the area, and uh, her grave is here at the cemetery, so we'll try to find it. At the time, Egypt Valley, as it is now known, 
was the small farming village of Egypt. Louisa was a 13-year-old housemaid who worked for a local family who also employed Carr. There are conflicting reports as to whether she and Carr were ever engaged at all, or if her family rejected the engagement due to learning of his character and temper. What is known from the highly publicized court proceedings is that Carr was a member of the Union Army during the Civil War era and reportedly struggled with alcoholism, fights, and even committed murders before being discharged. It was late afternoon on January 21st, 1869, when Carr attacked Fox. He hid behind a fence post until she passed by, leaving her body in a ditch on the side of the road. This is the area where many have reported seeing the ghost of the girl. Before he was apprehended, Carr attempted suicide, first with a knife and then a gun. And after being treated for his wounds, he was sentenced to death just five days later. Carr's reported last words blamed whiskey for his downfall and called for it to be banned. We are at stop number 25 on the Belmont County Geo Tour, and uh, stop number 25 has taken us back to the place that I've called home for the weekend, Bart Camp State Park. The sandstone hills of the Appalachian Plateau envelop this region of Ohio. Bart Camp State Park is one of the few places where visitors can glimpse what Ohio's forests look like prior to settlement. You can camp, hike, horseback, snowmobiles, there's paddlers, fishers, all kinds of stuff to do here. And uh, aside from the rain, which the park can't control, uh, I've really enjoyed my stay here this weekend. The sun's out, the clouds are subsiding, the coat's off, as we wrap up the Jeep tour. Your mysterious footpath. Will it take us to the cache? Only one way to find out. Five. Post-it notes and erasers. Lego Star Wars pin. And me being a Star Wars fan, naturally we have to trade this out. So we'll uh, swap that out, sign our log, on to the next one. We are at stop number 26 on the Belmont County Geo Tour. Now, number 26 takes us to Belmont Mills. Now, Belmont Mills has a long history of rooted in family and service. It began in 1888 as a flour mill, utilizing the railroad for distribution. See, I done jinxed myself. I was raving at the last stop about how nice the weather had gotten, and it's starting to rain again. Ah, typical. Always taking the path less traveled. But, never. Nonetheless, we have a cash. Got our log, more coasters, CDs, flashcards, sign this, put it back, on to the next one. We got some bad news guys, I got caught by three muggles. Thank you. You don't say. Thank you for peeing on camera for me, I appreciate that. But they promised not to tell where the cash is at, so we're good. Well, you guys have a great day. We are at stop number 28 on the Belmont County Geo Tour. Now this little memorial is for Harley E. Warwick. He was an American barn painter best known for his work painting mail pouch tobacco advertising on barns across 13 states in the American Midwest and Appalachian states. Over his 55-year career, Warwick painted or retouched over 20,000 mail pouch signs. We are at stop number 29 on the Belmont County Geo Tour, and number 29 has taken us to the Belmont County Military Veterans Museum.
Now, the museum is home to artifacts and history pertaining to the services provided by the veterans of Belmont County. Better love. Got a cool sticker. A pen, army man. A little pony necklace. So we'll uh, sign this on the next one. We're here at stop number 27 on the Belmont County Geo Tour. And number 27 has taken us to Dysert Woods. Dysert Woods is a 50 acre tract of old growth oak forest. It is the largest known remnant of the original forest of southeastern Ohio. Some of these trees that we're going to see here are 400 years old and stand over 140 feet high. And it can have a diameter of up to four feet. The woods are located in unglaciated southeastern Ohio. The area is characteristically hilly with local relief exceeding 200 feet. The sedimentary bedrock in the region is composed mostly of sandstone and shale with coal seams occurring variably from near the surface to hundreds of feet underground. The rainfall and temperature conditions are well suited for decadist forest. Dysert Woods exists today as an old growth forest because several generations of the Dysert family kept it in its natural state. The splendor of the forest, formerly enjoyed by only a few, now has become available to many. We are at stop number 31 on the Belmont County Geo Trail. And stop number 31 has taken us to Raven Rocks. Proceed at your own risk. What are we getting into? For generations, Raven Rocks has been a favorite place for hikes and outings. The Raven Rock, as old timers called it, is the most accessible of its dramatic ravines and rock formations have been the chief attraction. That seems to have been true at least as far back as the year 760 AD, when according to Kent State archaeologists, Native Americans began a 200 year period of regular use of the Raven Rock for what appears to have been ceremonial purposes. I wasn't tired before, I am now. There's much hiking I do. I'm sure, I'm out of shape. Sign this one on to the next one. We are at stop number 32 on the Belmont County Geo Trail, and stop number 32 has taken us to the Barnesville Station. The village of Barnesville was platted in 1808 by James Barnes, who took advantage of a Dover's Road that ran through the area from the Ohio River. The road, as well as National Road, led to Barnesville being populated quickly. A railroad line was laid out through Barnesville in the middle 1850s, and a wooden freight house was built close to the current location of the depot. 
passenger service for the town was located in a corner room of the freight house until 1914, when the town was granted a depot by the B&O Railroad. The depot was opened in 1916 and was heralded by the local newspaper as long needed and greatly desired. The depot was the site of many city events, including troop send-offs during World War I, World War II, and the Korean War, as well as several farmers markets held on the site. We are at stop number 33 on the Belmont County Geo Tour. Stop number 33 has taken us to the Victorian Mansion Museum. The house stayed in the possession of private families until the 1960s. The house had sat vacant for several years and plans were made to raise the structure to make way for a gas station. The house was purchased by John Bradfield and Everett Hanlon for $10,000 and was turned over to the Belmont County Historical Society. A gazebo was added to the property in the 90s and is a popular space for many weddings. An elegant porch wraps around the entire length of the mansion. The porch contains a wooden plank floor and sandstone pillars. The porch is supported by four iconic columns. The entrance is framed with a fan light and side lights with a large, white, solid wooden door. The house contains 26 rooms decorated in Victorian era design. Beautiful oak fretwork welcomes visitors to the entrance parlor. The eye is instantly drawn to the hand-carved griffin found and the woodworking to the bottom right. Let's find the cash. Well, that was a lot of work. We are at stop number 34 on the Belmont County Geo Tour, the next to the last stop. Cash number 34 has taken us to Dickinson Longhorn Ranch. Sign that on the last one. We are at the 35th and final stop of the Belmont County Geo Tour. The 35th location has taken us to the Barnesville Hieroglyphs. So yeah, here's the hieroglyphs. Now these have been uh, outlined in charcoal. Now uh, these uh, hieroglyph carvings were created centuries ago by Native American people. Uh, the precise cultural affiliation of its creators are uncertain. Some have attributed the site to the Athena who inhabited the region approximately between 500 BC and 380. We got a cool little photo frame. We have our log. Sign that, put it back. Got a little token here. Oh, we got an arrowhead. I definitely think we're gonna swap out the arrowhead. Cash signed, cash replaced, and we are done with the Belmont County Geo Tour. And I have to say, honestly, this has probably been one of the most memorable and enjoyable experiences I've had geocaching. Um, the cache placement was amazing. The locations were fantastic. Uh, you know, we got to see so many different things on this geo tour. Uh, we were able to do it in one weekend, which is awesome. 
Um, in spite of all of the rain and quite honestly the crappy weather, uh, this has been a great experience. I enjoyed camping at Bart Camp State Park. Um, so big, big shout out and big thank you uh, to the Belmont County Visitors Bureau for organizing this geo tour. Uh, 10 out of 10. Link is in the comments below uh, if you're interested in participating and finding these caches yourself. Um, highly recommend it. And uh, until next time, happy caching.